So we have to acknowledge the fact that things have changed and we have to adapt to change. We are people that are uh, prone to adapting to change. We have had change to take place in our lives and our family's history down through the years. And now uh, this is a change that has taken place and I don't see um, things resorting back to the so-called norm. I don't see it happening because this agenda is underway. Uh, first thing we, we want to talk about is the, the first uh, change that we have seen is that we have um, a civil, our civil liberties are being challenged and a lot, a lot of them are being, uh, uh, you know, taken away. They're diminishing. They're going away. Uh, a lot of things that we uh, thought that would last forever, uh, they're uh, slowly but surely taking away the freedom of, of speech. Even being able to come out and say what's in your heart and your mind, and that, that's beginning to be challenged by the system. So the civil liberties are being uh, taken away. Things are changing. Um, you can't just go in the store like you would uh, ordinarily do. You have to uh, measure up to the protocol. You got to have your mask on and different things like that. And uh, now they have placed an individual at the door of most facilities in order to make sure that nobody comes in without having um, the, the, the measurements of the mask on your face, different things like that. The next things that uh, uh, we want to look back and face up to is that the economics have changed. Our economy has changed. Uh, we're going to look at a scripture that says, And God spake on this wise, that his seed should sojourn in a strange land, and that they should bring them into bondage, and entreat them evil 400 years. 400 years. So we see these things are uh, taking place in our life and in the, in the lives to come. My prayer goes out to uh, my children, my grandchildren. You know, uh, most of us baby boomers are, are reaching a certain age of maturity. Uh, you know, we got a different age group now. Uh, the baby boomers are not the old, old, you know, the, the old people. In our day when we was young that we considered old, we're not like that. Uh, uh, we carry uh, age differently from the uh, former, uh, our, our predecessors. We, we uh, carry it dif uh, differently. All right, the economy is being destroyed right before our face. The economy is being destroyed. Um, they have to implement certain uh, stimulus packages and relief packages to keep it alive. But these uh, relief uh, aids and funds are really uh, going to cause more detriment down the road because this money has, has got to be accounted for. Somebody's going to have to uh, pay for this money that's being printed out of thin air. So the economies are being destroyed right before our face, and, um, and we must be prepared for the coming days. Right now, I don't believe a lot of us are really feeling the, the pain, uh, but when you look over the TV, and you see a lot of people that are going through the, uh, the pandemic, and a lot of them are losing their homes, losing their job, a lot of, a lot of them are waiting for their uh, pay, pay checks, their unemployment checks, and different things like that, and the checks are not coming like they thought they should. So. So, so a lot is happening right now that, that we got to understand that things are not going to resort back to the so-called normal. The next thing that we want to talk about is that businesses are being closed down. Now, this is all, you know, we're just looking back. Businesses are being closed down. It's been happening on and off and on and off uh, for the last few years, but we have seen uh, a, a certain trend here now where the businesses are closing and they're not opening back up. A lot of them are struggling to stay open. So that means that somebody is losing losing their livelihood. 
when the businesses are closing. Uh, so we, we got to be very, very concerned about this. Uh, the next thing that we want to look back on is that families are being separated and isolated. You know, um, if you got elderly people in, in the uh, nursing homes, they don't want you to go see them, or you got to stand outside of a window and, um, you know, enjoy your, your elderly relatives or friends or whatever. And, and many times when people go into the hospital, you can't even go in and visit them because of this um, new law and statute that they are, they're putting out before the public. So things are changing, and, and um, uh, the road back to normality, I don't think it exists. I think we're in a whole new era, and uh, uh, it's no return back to the so-called norm. So I think we need to be uh, very, very concerned about this, you know, because things are, are really uh, toppling over. The next thing I want to talk about is um, uh, poverty. Uh, this system is enhancing poverty, is making poverty more prevalent. A lot of the middle class are tumbling down, you know, they're coming off of that uh, limelight of being able to purchase what they want, live where they want, and you know, just have the American dream. That's diminishing. I'm, I'm seeing a lot of things that are, are shocking to me. Um, I, I'm not going to put it on the screen because I'm not going to be before you long. They're, they're calling this uh, uh, the dark winter um, that, that we are encountering. So uh, we're in the beginning of a year. Things are, are still uh, at a standstill, and we don't see any relief in sight. Okay, we are... Uh, are moving families and children are, are, are being moved into um, detention centers and different places like that. And you all seen the rash of young people and families that had gotten separated that were trying to cross the border. You know, a lot of that had happened, and a lot of them were separated from their families. Well, you, you're not hearing a lot about all those things, but you, you be sure that it's not resolved. A, a, a lot of that is still not resolved. A lot of those children are still separated from their parents. So, uh, um, you know, we we are in a place now where we stand a chance for murder and rape and, and robbery, burglaries to, to increase this year. So um, we have to really, really be prayerful. Uh, we had a real nice prayer meeting that um, uh, at the church. And uh, we prayed in some things that we wanted to, the Lord to do, the most how to do. And, and we are yet seeking his face because this, this really needs to be a year of prayer. 2021 needs to be a year of prayer. And I would say that people need to get in um, a place where that you can be informed prophet. Properly, a lot of people are, are being ill-informed. Uh, I was talking to my brother, and we was talking about, you know, a lot of the people that think that uh, a lot of this is a conspiracy theory, you know, on, on certain things. But we have to understand that uh, this this is not going to go away. All right, um, let's move on a little bit uh, further. Uh, we we're gonna see a little bit more police state getting ready to come in because I believe that the the uh, vaccines are going to be governed by the army in cer certain instances. So um, I see a change coming in. Some people say they see, uh, you know, everything getting ready to resort back to normal and better. I'm not seeing that. I hope that they're right. You know, I, I, this is one time that I want to be proved wrong. Because I, I would love for things to be better for everybody because i got children, i got grandchildren, and I, I want them to, to have a decent life. But uh, according to the Word of God, I don't see things getting any better. All right, uh, this is um, a situation that uh, we have to understand that this is a reality of things. This is not an illusion. This is for real. 
this is actual live and in color you know so um, uh, the governments are being uh, controlled by an inner circle of people uh, politics are you know being controlled by an inner circle being controlled by entitlements being controlled by uh, donations or whatever so we are at a, a place where if you don't have the most high you're going to be in bad shape okay all right let's move on a little bit further we talking about uh, a brief look back we just uh, stated a few things we wanted to look back on and then we just went over a few things that we looked back and saw that they are different uh, these things that we're dealing with they're not the same it's not like it used to be um, so so let's not fool ourselves and think that everything is going to resort back to normal because I don't think it is all right and God spake on this wise, the seed should sojourn in a strange land and uh, that they should bring them into bondage and, and treat them evil 400 years. Verse number seven, and the nation whom they shall uh, be in bondage will I judge, said God. And after that shall they come forth and serve me in this place. So that, that's what I'm looking for to get past get past this situation that we're in so that we can go forth and serve the most high. That's what I'm looking for. You know, I'm not uh, enjoying the trauma, seeing people traumatized. I'm not enjoying that. Um, but I do have peace in the situation because I understand through the word that uh, he have already told us what would transpire and what would happen. So we're going to look at the, the scripture a little bit and see exactly, you know, what uh, the scripture have to say in the book, book of Acts, chapter number 7. Uh, then said the high priest, are these things so? Uh, then go on to the next verse. And he said, men, brethren, and fathers, hearken. The glory of, of the God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham, and he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Quran, and said unto him, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred, and come into the land which I shall show you. So God spoke to Abraham, and you all know that Abraham was the father of the blessings of all nations. And um, we are the descendants of Abraham. As a matter of fact, we are direct descendants of Abraham. We were not just blessed from the, the total blessings of the whole nation, the whole world. It's blessed by, because of him. Spirituality kind of came into uh, the world through Abraham because he's the father of blessings. Okay, let's move on a little bit further. Uh, verse number four, then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Quran. And from thence, when his father was dead, he removed into this land wherein ye now dwell. And he gave him none inheritance in it. No, not so much as to set his foot on. Yet he promised that he would give it to him for a possession and to his seed after him, when as yet he had no child. So right now we, we are at a, a pinnacle. Sometimes we feel like, man, this thing don't look like it's going to happen. We've been going through all this trouble and all this pain for so long. I don't think that, that we're going to come out of it. You know, that's what a lot of people have, have come to think. And uh, a lot of people, they are ready to just succumb and give in to whatever uh, that it's offered you uh, to to release you back into um, normality. So they're ready to do, do whatever, you know, and, and it's designed that way. It's designed that way. But I'm uh, a believer that we must hold fast and endure to the end. All right? Verse number six, and God speak on this wise, that his seed was sojourn in a strange land, and that they should bring them into bondage and entreat them evil 400 years. 
A lot of people, you know, they read the scripture over there. Uh, it, it tells us that uh, Abraham sojourned, or the children of Israel sojourned for 430 years, but they fail to realize that that's a combination of the time that they dwelt in Canaan and Mizraim or, uh, or Egypt. Uh, and they didn't go into bondage until after uh, uh, Jacob came down into that land and you know when Joseph called them into that land and they didn't they weren't in bondage uh, during that time so you you don't have a 400 year span of time to be able to justify that scripture at most it probably would come out to about 215 years but as we move forward we see that um, uh, we qualify for that time because over in um, this country from 1619 all the way up to uh, 2019, uh, we have uh, experienced trouble and trials and tribulations and, and have been entreated evil for that entire time. All right, let's continue on. <clears throat> Verse 7 says, And the nation whom they shall be in bondage will I judge, said God. And after that shall they come forth and serve me in this place. So uh, something has to happen. Uh, the nation that have done the atrocities to the people of the Most High are going to have to uh, pay for all what they have done. And they're going to have to give an account to the Most High for the atrocities that they have done against the people of, of the Most High. All right, let's move on a little bit further. In the book of Acts, the next verse, verse number 8. And he gave him the covenant of circumcision, and so Abraham begot Isaac and circumcised him the eighth day. And Isaac begot Jacob and Jacob begot the 12 patriarchs. So that's uh, a little brief history that is given. You know, I often speak of the, the, the fact that circumcision was given to, to us first. And we see it here in this scripture. And it was stated in the scripture that he gave uh, the circumcision to Abraham and they did a study on the eighth day that the body was uh, capable of healing itself on the eighth day uh, more so than before that time. So that's why the Lord told him the eighth day because your body is making enough uh, properties for it to heal uh, itself from that circumcision. So we see there that uh, uh, the eighth day and then Isaac begot Jacob and then Jacob begot the 12 patriarchs. So Jacob's name was changed to Israel and there we get the, through his 12 sons or the 12 tribes of Israel, which is considered as the patriarchs. All right, let's continue on. Verse number nine says, and the patriarchs move uh, with envy, sold Joseph into Egypt but God was with him, all right, and delivered him out of his affliction and gave him favor and wisdom in the sight of Pharaoh, the king of Egypt, and he made him governor over Egypt and all his house. So we see that uh, uh, Joseph excelled to prominence. So this could not be considered as bondage during this time of Joseph because he considered uh, uh, as a, uh, the, the right-hand man to the Pharaoh and he was given keys to the storehouse and, and uh, he was almost like a monarch without the title. Uh, you know, he was a prime minister, so to speak. All right, <clears throat> verse number 11. Now there came a dearth over all the land of Egypt and, and Canaan and uh, Chanan and great affliction, and our fathers found no substance. So um, we see here now things are beginning to change. So all down through history, people have to go through changes. Like we're going through a change right now. Uh, but this change that we're going through is, is going to be like none other. No other history or no other time period is going to match what we're going to have to go through. 
Uh, so um, I believe that we we must position ourselves to be able to handle what's getting ready to come. We got to recondition our mind, recondition our way of thinking because uh, we have been made to become lazy uh, as far as being able to go through what uh, the Most High is putting up on us. We we don't want to deal with it. We don't want to go through it. We, we want to uh, continue to uh, act like everything is supposed to be like it was. But we got to be ready for change. All right? Verse number 12. But when Jacob heard that there was corn in Egypt, he sent out uh, our fathers first. And the second time Jacob, Joseph uh, was made known to his brethren and Joseph's kindred was made known unto Pharaoh. So we see here that this is an important scripture because if he's down in Egypt and his uh, brethren came down and uh, they couldn't even recognize him in the beginning until Joseph made it known that these are my brethren. So they must have looked pretty similar, you know, like uh, uh, Hamanites and, and Shemites at this particular time look pretty much the same. Uh, and when we look at it, all men at this time came from uh, uh, Noah, were offspring from Noah. All right, let's continue on. Then sent Joseph and called his father Jacob to him and all his kindred, three score and 15 souls. So Jacob went down to Egypt and died, he and our fathers. So we see that there's a trend going on that they're in this land and uh, the chastisement hasn't taken place. My point here is that I'm showing you where uh, the uh, affliction hasn't taken place yet. Uh, so the, the scripture said that after the death of Pharaoh, there, there rose a Pharaoh that knew not Joseph. Then it begins to mark the time when affliction was really placed upon uh, the children of Israel down there and they petitioned the Most High to to uh, deliver them and he delivered them and pulled them out of that land. So we're at a pinnacle time now to where we must recognize and notice uh, that our day is about to come. All right, let's continue. Acts number 16, 16th verse. And it reads, And there carried over to Sechem and laid the sepulchre that Abraham brought for a sum of money and his sons of Emor and the father of Sychem. And when they, the time of promise drew nigh, which God had sworn to Abraham, the people grew uh, and multiplied in Egypt. And another king arose which knew not Joseph. See, that's what I was talking about, that another king arose that knew not Joseph. So this is what we want to focus on, is that uh, the time has changed. Uh, uh, now you got a king that's uh, not in the favor of the children of the Most High. Then it says, the same dwelt subtility and with, with our kindred, and evil entreated our fathers so that they cast out their young children to the end that they might not live. In which time Moses was born and was exceeding fair and nursed up in the father's house three months. And when he was cast out, Pharaoh's daughter took him up and nourished him for her own son. And Moses was learned in all the wisdom of the Egyptians and was mighty in the words and in deed. And when he was full 40 years old, it came unto his heart to visit his brethren, uh, the children of Israel. So we see a trend going on here. But I want to share something with you um, <clears throat> in, in this particular Bible that I have here. We're going to deal with um, it's, uh, the 400 years of slavery. And it gives you a little outline. 
it says Jamestown, Virginia, in the year 1611, is when, let me get that, is when America committed the greatest crime in world history. The kidnapping, rape, and brutal enslavement of Yah's chosen people scattered from our homeland after the destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD. The Israelites were scattered throughout Africa. The Hermetic tribes were financed by the Europeans to catch and capture Israelites for purpose of chattel slavery. Although millions of Hebrews were captured and then enslaved into the Caribbean and South America between 1525 and 1866, the first U.S. slave arrived in 1619. This was known as the transatlantic slave trade. So, so we have uh, history that uh, shows us that you know this thing happened, and it was, it's a legitimate 400 years. <clears throat> let's let's read a little bit more of that. Okay. This heinous crime set in motion the clock of judgment. Uh, the clock would continue its ticking for 400 years to hide the evidence of their crime and change our Elohim, which is God, uh, uh, and beat our Hebrew language out of us and changed our names. So there's a statue that was built in memorial. All right, let's, let's move on a little bit further, read a little bit more. And defiled us. And defiled us with their meats and practices to control us. Uh, they sold our Hebrew Israelite scriptures. Um, they stole our Hebrew Israelite scriptures and taught us Christianity, a per perverse distortion of the image of the word of Yah and slave masters religion taught us to hate ourselves and each other because Yah created us in his own image and uh, we eventually began to hate Yah. Meanwhile, the clock, the clock kept ticking. So we we have some information here, and uh, it's it's a a good thing that we do have some kind of restoration of the truth about what happened to us and the truth about what is happening right now. I went and got that information just to show you. There is a record, you know, but it has been distorted. Now, when, when this uh, particular text told us that they taught us Christianity, they taught us a European version of Christianity. And they changed all of the, uh, the portraits and the pictures, the pictures rather, of, of the uh, patriots uh, to depict their nationality, which was a terrible thing. So uh, I like the way that this particular article starts off it says that this was the most heinous crime in in, a, in all american history this was the most he, heinous crime and, and it's shoved in the background it's never commemorated never talked about so um now it's coming full circle coming back around for us to to take another look we need to look back and take another look at what has happened to our people all right, let me just see what else it says here. Capturing Hebrew slaves and holding us hostage from our identity allowed America and European allies to live a life of unprecedented decadence and prosperity and uh, would become the envy of the world. America became the richest nation uh, on earth by forcing us into slave labor. The Constitution of the United States claimed that Hebrew slaves were only considered three-fifths of a man, and the three-fifths clause, Article 1, Section 2 of Americans, even to this day, consider us to be less than human. So that's, that's some information that some of us probably uh, read and overlooked. Uh, I just wanted to just give you a little history on uh, this 400 years that we're dealing with 
And now, at the end of the 400 years, look at what's happened. Look at how things have spiraled out of control. Look at how things have really gone haywire. So the, the, the scriptures have got to be fulfilled at this point. They got to be brought out. Uh, so we got to uh, look and watch this great atrocity of revelation be played out. It's, it's got to be played out now. We cannot uh, uh, turn our back now and try to just be blessed all the way through the entire um, ordeal. We, we've got to uh, live through this thing. we got to experience the hand of the Most High moving against those that have perpetrated this evil. There's no way out. All right? Acts, back to Acts, verse number uh, 40, 48. Okay. Howbeit the Most High dwelleth not in temples made with hands, such as the prophet. Heaven is my throne, and earth is my footstool. <clears throat> Heaven is my throne and earth is my footstool. What house will ye build me, saith the Lord? Or what is this place of my rest? Have not my hands made all things? The stiff neck and uncircumcised and hardened ears, ye all you do always resist the Holy Ghost, and your fathers did so uh, do you. So at this point, they're upset about this message that this, um, I think Stephen is preaching. You know, this is when he was stoned. And, uh, you know, the scripture talked about that uh, the Lord, you know, got upset at how they treated Stephen. And because he, he preached a message that, that was sharp and, and they couldn't handle it. They, they got so upset at this man. We're going we gonna to see what the scripture said. All right, verse number 52 which the prophets have not your own fathers persecuted, and they have slain them and showed before the coming of the just one, of whom ye have been now the betrayers and murderers, who have received the law and the disposition of angels and have not kept it. When they heard these things, they were cut to the heart, and they gnashed on him with their teeth. Can you believe that? They began to bite this man. They began to attack this man with an unprecedented attack like animals. They, they, the animalistic nature came out of these people. And they began to attack this man. Let me read verse 54 again. When they heard these things, they were cut to their heart and they gnashed on him with their teeth. But he, being full of the Holy Ghost, looked up steadfastly into heaven and saw the glory of God and Jesus standing on the right hand of God and said, Behold, I see the heavens open and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. In verse number 57, And they cried with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord. So we see that these people have a spirit that uh, you cannot contend with it. And this is the kind of spirit that we're going to have to deal with, people. We're going to have to deal with the same spirit that attacked Stephen when he tried to bring forth the word of the Most High. We're going to have to deal with it. There's no way out of it. All right? And cast him out of the city and stoned him. And witness laid down their clothes at the young man's feet whose name was Saul. So the people uh, that was there, they, they laid their coats by Saul, which is, was converted to Paul. You know, he, he was there consenting at the death of Stephen. And saying, get him, hit him, kill him. You know, and... Um, it was recorded that they laid their coats at Saul's feet as they began to slay this man. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a long voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, 
he fell asleep. So my friend, we have a lot that we have to contend with, a lot that we have to realize and notice in the scripture. We're coming to this time again where people are going to be enraged with this uh, situation that's going on with the vaccine. If, if it plays out in my mind like I'm thinking, you know, the scripture is going to come into play where, uh, you know, everybody going to turn against each other and begin to be afraid of one another. Uh, you know, so uh, you got to pray and seek the face of the Most High uh, for the right decision to make in this uh, dilemma that we're in. But, you know, when all is said and done, I got peace. I got peace in my heart, peace in my mind, peace in my spirit. And that's the only place you're going to find peace. Peace is not going to be in this world. This world is going to be made to be brought to his knees and to the Most High come in and, and change everything and knock this debauchery over. Uh, we're going to have to deal with it and have faith in the Most High. So let us stay together. Let us pray together. Let us encourage one another. Uh, like I say, I don't see things lightening up this year. Uh, and, uh, and I hope it will. I hope it would for the sake of everybody, you know, to be uh, in harmony and peace. But according to the word, it says evil men and seducers shall whack worse and worse. So, my friend, if you don't have uh, your how was shy in your life, you don't have the most high in your life, you need to be afraid. You need to be uh, uh, scared of what's getting ready to happen. But if you have him in your life, if you have the safety and the security that comes through his name and through his blood, you can relax and uh, uh, just brace yourself to, to prepare yourself to go through whatever is allowed to happen in this wicked world. That's all I have, my friend. I'm getting ready to sign off. Uh, wake up Hebrew, Bishop Coleman. Shalom.